Good morning. I don't have much footage of the day leading up to the night train, but here's some stock footage to show you what I might have done. Anyway, we chilled with a friend in Golhem Park, where we met several wonderful kitties, enjoyed a tea, before heading to Halkali Station on the outskirts of Istanbul. On the way, we met a guy on the train who helped us because the train randomly decided to terminate two stops before Halkali and we were confused as shit. He then proceeded to get on the second train with us and tried to not only convert me to Islam several times, but also ask for money. Cheers, mate. But don't worry, because not everyone in Istanbul is like that, and we still had a lovely time regardless. Needless to say, don't be worried about telling people to fuck off. Sometimes, they deserve it. We start at the station, where we're in the queue to get on the train. I wasn't trying to film this girl, it's just unfortunate camera placement and I certainly don't want to come across as creepy. <laughs> Still, hello. Um, anyway, anyway, yeah, time for a room tour. You get two fold down beds, one on the top, one on the bottom. There's a window for people to see you naked and for you to escape if in the event of a fire. Thumbs up. There's also an air conditioning unit controller but ours was broken and kept automatically rising in temperature so we ended up having the window open all night which was incredibly noisy but you get what you pay for and that was £62 for the both of us. Amazing. There are light controls, a button to summon an annoyed Turkish man where you can hound him with your silly foreigner questions, a sink which doubled up as a urinal because men, and a trash can for annoying girlfriends. <laughs> oh god, there she is. If you need a toilet at night and squatting isn't an option then at one end of the carriage you have a western style toilet. And if you do want to shit all over your feet, guess what's at the other end? Now, I have to mention the following. Bring food and drink. Snacks and drinks are provided in first class, which is nice, but this is a 12 to 14 hour journey. And my God, if you're as fat as I am, you'll die of starvation. There is a handy little shop up the road and a few more options nearby. I'd aim to arrive about an hour and 30 minutes before your train just to give yourself time to chill before subsequently chilling again. By the way, you do get a small fridge in your room which is fantastic and fits about two one and a half litre bottles. There's also a small freezer space which comes in handy. And it's time to hit the rails. You get enough time to enjoy the wonderful scenery of Turkey as you make your way across the Balkan Peninsula to Bulgaria. The train will stop a few times along the way, so it's not essential that you get on board at Istanbul. Some people take a bus to the border and then hop on there. Great if you fancy an extra little adventure. Time for a little warning. We had four passport checks. Yep, that's right, we had four. Three on the train and one which you're about to see. If you can fall asleep and wake up quickly, then you can sleep the second the train leaves Istanbul. But with all the checks, we didn't get to bed until about 3am. We had about six hours sleep, which wasn't too bad. Time for our first main stop at Kapaku. Kapakule, something like that. Don't hang around for long as the train might leave without you. I believe there's some vending machines here if you did want to stock up on refreshments, but as mentioned, I buy things beforehand. The train switches to a diesel locomotive for now before switching back to an electric one again. You can hear that diesel loco pretty loudly, so don't have the window open all night and hope your aircon works. And the train heading the opposite way arrives here around the same time as well. Ah, this dinner takes me back to my student days, but it did the job. We have a long wait in Bulgaria whilst passports are checked and half the train splits off to Romania for the Bosphorus Express. Now it's time to carry on through the night before arriving in Sofia, behind schedule at about 10.30am. Ha! <laughs> 
and look at those views proper lovely country this but i'll be honest the best views are outside of the city Now, how the fuck do we get to our hotel? 